All righty. Well, I just wanted to say to everybody who's here, all the debaters and all the audience members, thank you for coming. I'm really excited that this debate finally got off the ground um, and Debate Club, we're finally doing stuff again. Um, so yeah, this is like a debate I wanted to do for a while, like just an economic debate on the war on drugs and whether or not capitalism needs to end to end the war on drugs. It's something I've heard come up with an SSDP a lot, but I, I didn't feel like it was like fully touched on all the time. So I'm really happy that we got to do this topic and we have a great panel um, of debaters. So on the NEG team is Sophie and Richard um, who are going to be defending the point we cannot end the war on drugs without ending capitalism. And on the AF team, we have Jeremy and Aaron um, who are going to be for we can end the war on uh, we can end the war on drugs without any capitalism, um, and then Evan is our moderator. Also, the other tin foil hat beside Richard. Um, I like this. We got like themes going on. We're we're doing it. I like it. Um, yeah. And also, before we start, um, I'm going to hand it over to Evan in a bit. He's going to be timing the debate, um, managing the debate. I'll be I'll helping out. If any of you guys need help, you can just text me or message me or something. Um, but yeah. Um, I wanted to give a couple thank yous to Will uh, from CU Boulder, who is in the meeting. I, I, I think his name is pronounced Shaninger or Shaninger. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, he, he helped us organize. And also Lou Watson from uh, Toastmasters, who may be dropping in. She helped us uh, plan the debate. And also Susan Squibb, who's known as the Cannabis Maven. Um, who was in an event I did last spring, passed me on to Lou Watson. So all those people, if it weren't for them, this would be happening. Um, and yeah, if you guys are interested in Debate Club, please um, come to our meetings on Wednesdays time. The time is a little open for like when it's going to be, because um, I know everybody just has different schedules that are changing all the time. So in general, look out for uh, emails on Debate Club on Wednesdays if you guys want to get involved in helping to plan the next debate, being in the next debate. Um, we'd love to have you. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Evan. Um, and if you guys need anything or have any questions, just ask me. It's going to be great. Again, it's not like a big formal debate. We're just we're just a little little aji baji here. So mm -hmm. it's going to be good. Let's get started. Hi, um, I'm Evan Hudson coming to you live from Dubuque, Iowa, the masterpiece on the Mississippi. And this is the... Uh, SSDP costume debate. And so today, like Nancy Grace mentioned, uh, we're going to be talking about ending the war on drugs. And everyone here is in agreement that we need to end the war on drugs and that we will end the war on drugs. But we're going to be talking about whether we need to end capitalism prior to doing so. So um, like Nancy Grace mentioned, we have the two teams on, and on the, the negative team, they are arguing that we cannot end the war on drugs without ending capitalism. And the affirmative is uh, saying that we can end the war on drugs prior to the dissolution and collapse of the global capitalist system. So um, how this is going to work is we have a kind of structure where each team will they give the opening statements and then respond to each other's points. And I'll go through that at the beginning of each segment. But what's uh, what's going to happen is in order to let you know that you're running out of time, I'll change my background. And so I'll give an example of that. So when there's one minute remaining, you will see me suddenly transported to a mystical nebula like this. And so that... When I am out in outer space, that means that you got one minute left to continue talking. And once you get real close, like 10 seconds or so, I might give you like a verbal warning, like you're almost done or almost out of time or something like that. And then uh, I am a benevolent uh, moderator. So if you go a little bit over and you're wrapping up, that's cool. But if you're like starting to go like 30 seconds or a minute over, I might exercise my iron fist of justice and like cut you off and send it over to the next people. Are there any questions about that? Everyone good? Cool. So um, we will begin with opening statements and the opening statements will be eight minutes long 
a piece, and we are going to be starting with the negative team. So whichever member of the negative team is giving the opening statement, if it's all right with you guys, uh, we got Sophie on deck. Uh, all ready, Sophie? Uh, yep, if you are. Right on. So I'm queuing up my timer thing right now, and you have eight minutes. You can go. Okay. Um, so the first question is, what is capitalism? The negation defines capitalism as the economic system characterized by the private or corporate or ownership of capital goods by investments that are determined by private decision and by prices, productions, and di the distribution of goods that are determined mainly by competition in the free market. This is this definition is via Merriam-Webster. The second aspect of definitions for this debate is what is the war on drugs? The negation defines it as kind of going, um, it's like more multifaceted just because it's such a broad term. Um, the term war on drugs, drugs was first coined by the U.S. President Richard Nixon on June 17th, 1971. There was a historical precedent for set in the beginning, um, set much earlier on, um, with the first drug law that was passed in the U.S., which was an 1875 law banning the smoking of opium and opium dens in San Francisco. Um, so that term, for the purpose of this debate, debate isn't just going to refer to the things that happened after June 17th, 1971. It also relates to the, um, to the series of actions, laws, and policies made by the U.S. government and other countries toward a pro prohibition of the drug trade. Um, and also the drug, the term, the war on drugs can refer to stigma, oppression, and the legal consequences that people who use drugs face in our society as it stands today. Um, the, the next part <laughs> is, how are these two related? So the origins of American capitalism largely were invented in the slavery South, where the foundation, foundational aspects of our economic system were developed under this brutal si system. Some examples of this are, is that Wall Street was first used as a market for buying and selling of enslaved people, and then expanded to become a stock exchange. And many aspects of our current system were invented in the South to account for the productivity of enslaved people. This connecting slavery to the invention of the system of capitalism as we experience it now is necessary to understand the con connection between the war on drugs and capitalism, because it highlights the economic system of capitalism requires a violent oppression of a group of people to function. So long as capitalism fun functions, there's no ethical consumption of drugs. Therefore, the violence of the war on drugs will never cease unless the, unless the system of capitalism is dismantled. Capitalism functions by driving producers to compete in a market where the lowest prices win. And, uh, in reference to the system of slavery, that the ability to create low cost goods depended on a form of unethical exploitation of workers. While our opponents may offer policies and amendments to our legal system to amend some, some of the harms of the war on drugs era of legal policy, like the things following Richard Nixon, um, the fact of the matter is that while the drug trade functions under capitalism, there will always be a drive for the cheapest manufacturing of drugs as possible, which will always lend itself towards an expo exploitation of workers, furthering poverty and oppression. Poverty and oppression are a feature of capitalism, not a failure of capitalism. The war on drugs was started by capitalism, by capitalists who put profit over people and who profited directly from incarceration. One of the phrases of SSDP is the war on drugs is a war on us. And for people to consume drugs in a healthy and ethical way, capitalism must be abolished. And the war on drugs will not end until most people have an ability to live free of oppression. So again, an example of this, of legal policy changing, but not truly having people live in a free or non-exploitive way or work in a non-exploitive way, is that 
the exploitation of workers in the completely legal uh, landscape of growing, in the legal landscape of growing marijuana um, in Humboldt County. There's a lot of, you know, systems that function legally, but still exploit workers. And this is also true in the legal landscape of, you know, grape production in Sonoma County for, for wine. Um, that both of these, you know, it's still a legal industry, but people are still exploited for it. Um, Nixon's war on drugs policies directly aided capitalism by incarcerating a massive number of citizens for, in the U.S. for drug use and drug offense related crimes. And then while these people were incarcerated, these citizens could be used as a cheap labor fo force being paid pennies for hours of work. Um, and just another sub point of that is that the military industrial complex is another aspect of the war on drugs and the, that was furthered by capitalism. Um, the US going in and destabilizing countries um, and then using those destabilized countries as places that could um, be cheap places to produce um, different raw materials for the illicit drug trade or um, just to you know, further profit. Um, Nixon's war on drug was created as a byproduct of market capitalism, putting profit over the wealthy <laughs> for the wealthy above the well-being of people. This point has been made consistently. Um, Poverty, poverty and suboptimal living conditions, which are the cause of many of the harms of drugs. Um, when we consider drugs being a neutral, a neutral substance, the conditions surrounding the drug use are often much more harmful than the drugs themselves. Examples like this are unsafe environments for use, lacking resources for clean injections, and a greater sen the greater sense of lack of connection between self purpose and community, which happens in an economically downturned environment that correlate to a higher rate of addiction or whatever you believe addiction to be, um, or just unhealthy use. These systems and this, the system of capitalism makes these economically downturned places where people do not use drugs in a healthy way much more common because in market, market capitalism, because it has to be a competitive market, market there are winners and losers. And this competitive nature of an unregulated market, people will lose that competition. And therefore, there must always be an impoverished community in this system where um, there must always be an impoverished communities. <laughs> and the healthy and safe use of drugs is very difficult in an economically underdeveloped place under capitalism. Um, and unsafe living conditions that correlate with the harmful conditions of use of drugs and therefore for the war on drugs to end there must be healthy there must be conditions for people able to use drugs in unhealthy and um, beneficial way and that cannot happen under capitalism all right and that is eight minutes thank you very much that was great so responding to that will be the uh, affirmative team who do we have on the affirmative side hey um uh, this is jeremy and uh i'm actually uh in culture today and you guys might be uh, wondering what Ann culture is doing here on an SSDP meeting well uh somebody went into a dark room turned the lights off and uh said Ann culture had a child three times into a mirror here i appeared on your zoom call so um i was previously in hell uh drinking mimosas with satan but here i am to defend capitalism my baby um so i guess here in a second uh, aaron is also miss aaron catherine mccall is my, my teammate um, we're going to do this a little bit different i'm going to do part of the introduction and she's going to do the other half because uh She's actually pretty well coursed in this. And so uh, her arguments are, are very nice. So just let me know when we're ready, Mr. Evan. All right, ready to go. Cool. So um, let me first define capitalism. Capitalism is often thought as an economic system in which private actors own and control property in accord with their interests. Um, and de demand and supply set prices and markets in a way that can serve the best interests of society. The essential feature of capitalism is the motive to make 
profit. However, uh, I think Ms. Aaron's going to point out why that uh, um, doesn't necessarily apply to the war on drugs. It's just a, a secondary and salutary issue to war on drugs. Uh, the war on drugs, however, is a an effort by the United States. It started in the 1970s to combat illegal drug use uh, by greatly increasing penalties, enforcement, and incarceration for drug offenders. Uh, the war on drugs began in June of 1971 when uh, Nixon declared drug abuse to be public enemy number one, increasing federal funding for uh, drug control agencies and drug treatment efforts. Um, let's see. Um, so he's uh, done this uh, national strategy to reduce uh, uh, um, supply. It's two-dimensional, uh, supply to reduction and demand reduction. So how are the two related? Uh, the profit motive and capitalism. Um, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, second, uh, socio-economic Skip down words. Socioeconomic conditions got some hair in my mouth, uh, such as poverty, lack of access to health care, low educational attainment, reduced job opportunities, um, make it worse for the war on drugs. Um, however, they do create problematic drug use, uh, failed economic policies, but um, capitalism also allows for mechanisms to retrofy that. So uh, capitalism allows for economic freedom and personal freedom. Um, capitalism protects political, social, health, and economic freedoms because uh, if the government owns the means of production that set prices of these, um, it invariably leads to a powerful state controlled by powerful actors. By limiting capital, you limit their ability to make their own decisions. Access to capital allows for freedom of movement, trade, and political influence. The war on drugs is fought, founded on false premises and was designed to fail. Um, again, um, Richard uh, Erkman, who was a Nixon aide, said it was uh, d directly implemented to, to target black and hippies, uh, folks of African-American communities, marginalized communities. Those were the folks that were originally designed for these drug policies. And so it wasn't necessarily a failure because it has been successful in continuing to marginalize those people. Um, no system is perfect. Um, cap other, uh, other capitalist societies do not have the same problems with equity associated with capitalism in the United States. Uh, for instance, in Japan, with a population of 125 million, there's only 4,000 homeless people. U.S. has a population of 330 million, there's over 600,000 homeless people. So maybe it's not capitalism, but the uh, particular capitalist policy. So I'm going to let Ms. Aaron finish up. Hi. The widening wealth gap in the United States is a matter of much public scrutiny, discourse, and concern. The blame for this problem is often laid at the feet of capitalists who advocate for the free market trade and private ownership. Capitalism is presented as an incentive-based system kept in check through competition. Capitalists subscribe to the beliefs first articulated by Adam Smith that the invisible hand of the marketplace will guide the forces of supply and demand and that all anyone needs to do is act in their own self-interest to create a prosperous society, right? So we are not disputing that that, that is, is, is a fundamentally like flawed position. Um, it's just that, uh, you know, the issue is more closer to the fact that um, that that's kind of a separate problem. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's like like the purposes of the war on drugs was not like they didn't wasn't to profit financially. That wasn't the like that wasn't the objective. You know it, that is a byproduct of the war on drugs. That is that some people have profited while others have not, and the war on drugs is at this point in time fundamentally waged as like a moral war, like a, like a moral position. And um, that was, and that started around the turn of the century through racism and racist policies, such as um, that made, you know, like that ended up being the precursors to the Harrison um, Act where drugs were then criminalized. Um, which, and uh, what else was I saying? It was saying that, um, so, at best, it's like at best capitalism is, is is a system economic system that rewards hard work at worst it is unsustainable and a hairbringer of poverty and inequality it is uh it is the driving force behind the widening wealth gap in the united states but it is not it's yeah so i hope that you understand what i'm saying which is that basically all that's really required to end the war on drugs is to legalize all currently illegal drugs because through the legalization and regulation of all currently illegal drugs that will in like that will effectively yeah it, it, then the people that are held hostage in jails and prisons throughout our country for um for drug crimes will be obviously well we would hope they would be let out okay and um you know and 
it's like, yeah, it would, it, that would change everything that would lead to the end of the war on drugs. It would cripple it, the, any kind of, 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 um, drug. Yeah. It would, the, um, any kind of cartels, because obviously who would go buy drugs on the corner if you could go buy drugs at Walgreens? Do you know what I mean? It's just like, it's, it's common sense dictates. And I think that adding capitalism into it as like a necessary step in order to, to end the war on drugs is like, are it just like is adding extra steps and into a problem that is like kind of, it's not cut and dry, but it is in a way it is cut and dry. It's like, it's like to end the war on drugs, you need to legalize all drugs. And that's pretty much how it goes. And, um, and yeah, that's my opinion and my stance. And you'll see that throughout the rest of the debate. Thank you for listening. All right. So we just saw the opening statements from our two teams and they're both excellent. Moving forward, the next step will be cross-examination. This is where the different teams address the opening statements of the opposing team. So um, first up will be the negative team and these, these will be three minutes. So each, each team will have three minutes to address the opening statements. And then following that, there will be a, a, a response from the opposing team. So first up, we have the negative team. Um, is that you, Richard? Oh, I think you're still mu muted. Yes. All right. So we'll have uh, three minutes for Richard and then three minutes from the affirmative team. One member will have a response and the, the same deal when we get down to one minute, you'll see my background change to the fancy nebula. So if, are you ready? Mm, I'm still gathering some info. All right, I'll give you like, let's take a short break for prep. And I would just like to say thank you to the opening presenters. Those were excellent. Sophie, Jeremy, and Aaron, or Ann Coulter, I'm sorry. By the way, Richard and I did not plan our matching tinfoil hats. That was a coincidence. It just goes to show there is an underlying order to the universe, man. Richard, you about ready for the uh, rebut the cross examination? Yes, about as ready as ever be. Thank you. All for right, that. you have three minutes. All right, awesome. So. In the opening statements, um, Jeremy mentioned that the best interest, um, capitalism puts the best interests of society at the forefront. But um, time after time, we have seen that um, capitalism has actually put the interests of um, uh, the personal interests of companies above all. And um, this has just been shown in uh, a variety of places, whether it be pipelines being built over indigenous communities or um, the lack of responsibility that um, oil companies get held to when um, uh, ecological disaster happens. And um, let's see. And um, let's see. And as we see, as uh, Jeremy stated that um, the main the main objective of the war on drugs was to end the or reduce the amount of the supply of drugs and also reduce the demand and i agree that with that but lowering the supply does not mean that um lowering demands or lowering the supply does not automatically mean the demand is also lowered and um let's see he mentioned personal freedoms are at the forefront of capitalism and while that is true, I believe that there are a lot of um, policy and legislation that kind of keep um, personal freedoms um, limited. 
uh, with that being like the amount of um, kind of uh, freedom we get with like what we choose or to um, engage in. And one of the main facts that I wanted to um, address was um, America is a free work, free market capitalist society. And um, uh, Aaron mentioned how that was um, that capitalism just made it worse, essentially. And um, capitalism is the reason for the war on drugs, uh, because even if it was based or even it was based in racism and um, wealthy capitalists were the main people who benefited from um, this system. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Richard. Well, now to respond, let's have someone from the affirmative team. And just to be clear, someone right now, the affirmative team will get three minutes. And then right after that, the affirmative team, two, three minutes right now to respond to what Richard just said. And then after that, the affirmative team will get three more minutes to respond to the affirmative, the negative team's opening statement. So Jeremy or Aaron, who is up next? Um, I, I'm going to take this, and I was actually preparing for a rebuttal against the opening statement, but I, I'll, I'll do my best for this one too. Um, so, you know, I, I think one of the common themes too that was said throughout both of them, um, you know, that capitalism is um, something that induces all these uh, situations of inequality, um, you know, poverty, oppression, um, economic uh, instability. These are all human conditions that come naturally with civilization. Um, and when you look to parallel governments, such as communism or fascism, um, you know, we haven't developed a better system. Those other parallel governments or forms of government have been more oppressive and have limited freedom uh, more so than anything else. Um, and so, you know, just to kind of cut the thing a little bit short, um, you know, there's really been no other formal proposal. Like, um, I, don't, I don't know if there's another better form of government. Um, really, capitalism allows for freedom and it's really not a condition. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of getting a little bit off track. Um, let's see. But yeah, I mean, I don't think that capitalism is the, the main driver for all these poverties and inequalities. Um, I think that they do exist in other forms of government um, and other forms of economic systems. Um, maybe not to the degree of the capitalism, but also we also haven't evolved with other forms of systems um, that are capitalists that, you know, can produce and have this much inequality. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, Anne, Miss Coulter, sorry. Um, now the affirmative team gets one more chance if you want to respond to the opening statement of the, um, of the negative team, if you'd like. Yes, please. Thank you. All right. You have three minutes. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I, I recall that Sophie said there was no ethical consumption because capitalism requires a subjugation of a certain group. And um, I, I just, I, I fail to see how they actually like are connected in a way. Like I, I'm not debating that uh, that capitalism requires the subjugation of a certain group. I just don't really see how that, what that how that pertains to to ethical consumption it's just like the the problem is really clear and i really feel like like adding all these extra steps and being like oh we have to end capitalism in order to end the war on drugs it's like whoa do you really want to end the war on drugs because it doesn't really seem like that because it's going to be a lot harder to end capitalism than the war on drugs not to be like blunt but um that it's like and and i'm not saying that we shouldn't and I'm I'm not saying that capitalism is is all that in a bag of chips. I'm I'm more saying that 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 is going to require that's going to have a lot more pushback from a lot of people that are in power. And and I just feel like we are getting off track of what our objective should be. You know, if when when we start worrying about toppling the economic system on the way to like getting these people out of jail for dope when they shouldn't be there. So um, that's just. That's just where I'm at with that. So, um, yeah. So, and also it was the, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Thank you very much for listening. All right. 
Oh man, I'm having to bite my tongue here and remind myself that I'm the moderator. And that, that just goes to show both sides are making really good points. So, we'll continue on with the negative team gets to respond to Miss Aaron's uh, response. Um, Sophie, is, would you like to take that? Yeah. Um, you, have, you have three minutes. So, going off of Aaron's response, um, so just kind of talking about how maybe that that strays from what we're trying to um, look at. I mean, the the goal of trying to end the war on drugs, when we look at it from a very long view, is trying to lessen the oppression of a certain group of people. And so even though we can make these policy changes, and that would you know that would be wonderful, right? That would be a step in the right direction. We're not arguing that we shouldn't make these policy changes. What we're arguing, and in the realm of this debate is that capitalism is inextricably linked to the war on drugs and the war of drugs will not end in its totality until the until people can live all people can live in a way free of oppression because if we just legalize all drugs there's still and we're still living under capitalism that we're there's still going to be an incentive for the market to make things cheaper and cheaper so even while it might be totally legal to consume all of these drugs there's still going to be people who are producing them in south america who are living under suboptimal conditions or there's going to be um and that's just under the under the reasoning of we're trying to have cheap production and cheap production is always going to have people an, an unethical production um and which by the nature of the competition within the market and that there will still be people living in poverty and that's not necessarily a facet of society that's a facet of si societies with hierarchies we only see evidence in anthropology that um, the facets of there's large inequality when we look at dental records and things like that when we're living in a society that has rigid hierarchies and that started with the beginning of agriculture but I'm getting away from the point but I'm just saying that there are ways for human beings to live without there being a lower without there being a lower class and we need to be able to imagine these futures we're not saying that we shouldn't legalize drugs we're not saying that we shouldn't take steps in the right direction. We're simply saying that the system of capitalism is inextricably linked with oppression. And even if we legalize all drugs, there's still going to be people that are harmed by the systems that create that people use and create drugs. So there is an ethical consumption because where those drugs are being getting, gotten from and everything like that further the oppression of other people. Thank you, Sophie. So that concludes the cross-examination portion of our debate. The next step is a little bit more intricate, so let me walk you through it real quick. This is going to be called the sub-points section, and so in this section both sides will get to kind of introduce their supplementary evidence or arguments, and so first up we'll start with the negative team. This will, the first step takes five minutes, so you'll have five minutes to introduce your, your supporting evidence and arguments. Then we'll have one minute for the opposing team to prepare their response. And so after that, then the affirmative team will have three minutes to respond to the supplementary arguments of the negative team. Then there will be one more minute for pre preparation, and the negative team can respond to the response. And that's three minutes. So. First up, a negative is five minutes, and then prep for one minute, and then affirmative gets three minutes to respond, and then negative gets three minutes to respond to the response. Does that make kind of sense to everyone? Cool. So we got uh, negative. We'll go again. Uh, Richard, uh, if you'd like to take it away. You got um, five minutes as soon as I go to my app. All right, five minutes. Ready? Oh, you're, uh, you're muted, though. So, um, let's see. Many of the problems perpetuated by capitalism have stemmed from an anthropocentric model for attaining resources and producing goods, which disregards the ecosystem and has mar continuously marginalized indigenous and lower socioeconomic populations. 
This only pours lemon on the wound that the war on drugs has caused, and though changing policy may temporarily fix the problems, um, the inequalities reined in by capitalism are important to address before we continue to use this system or play in a system that wasn't really made for the common. Um, one important effect of capitalism has, or one important effect capitalism has had on the war on drugs is its blatant connection to the legislation and policy. Lobbyists often put the interest of their companies above the benefit of the common good. So um, I'm going to be taking the stance of like um, more of the political kind of sector that um, uh, capitalism plays a role in because um, it has affected the economical sector of society as well. But I believe um, the political aspect has been a very um, pertinent issue and pursuing capitalism will have um, too much pushback as um, Aaron had like brought up. Like, um, but I believe it's, it is needed to attack the underlying darkness of the system or the unjust system in place. So, um, um, the biggest intersection of capitalism or that capitalism has had in society is in the political sector. The fact that com companies are able to lobby for their own po profits over the well-being of others. And let's see. Um, so yeah, I don't really have anything else other than that. Cool. Right on. Thank you, Richard. Um, so let's give the affirmative team, if you'd like, one minute to prepare your response to that. Jeremy, will that be you taking that side? Or Aaron? Oh. I will. Okay. Do you, you would like to, Jeremy? I'll, I'll bet you have it. Thanks. <laughs> so so um, I don't really need a minute to prepare. I'm ready. Okay. Cool. Let's do it. So um, ending the war on drugs should never be divorced from the lived reality and the lived experience of the people who are suffering because of it. So when I talk about the people who are suffering because of the war on drugs, I'm speaking about the people who are incarcerated right now for dope. I'm talking about the people, their families and loved ones, their children that are growing up in the foster system because they have been or, or have been taken away from their family. It's like, and when we forget to put a human face right on, on uh, it's like it's all well and good to like get all theoretical and be like oh yeah it's like there's no ethical consumption and um you know because they're suffering it's like i there is suffering i'm not here to debate whether they're suffering in the world or 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 whether greed and the capitalist motives are are wrong that's that's not my point my point is that when you talk about ending the war on drugs and, and then you and you forget about the people who are literally caught in the crossfire, that is a mistake. And, and, and you do an injustice then to all the people that are actually involved. And then that is like speaks on privilege in a lot of ways about like the privilege to be able to sit there and discuss other people's problems and not actually have to live it. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know. That's what I have. Thank you. All right. So that concludes the first half of the sub points segment. Now, uh, next up, the affirmative team will have five minutes to respond or to introduce their supplementary evidence and arguments. Um, that Jeremy will that, or Ann Coulter, will that be you? It, it will be I, Ann, yes. Um, all right, cool. Take it away when you're ready. So I, I probably won't use all the five minutes um, just because uh, I think some of you guys, well, I, I, we'll give it a shot. So, um, you know, just in retrospect, I guess kind of conclude with everything. Um, you know, one of the main points that we've kind of been driving through is that, um, well, first off, I, I think one of the main points is that it would be a lot easier to end the war on drugs, one policy move, than it would to, to um, uh, completely reestablish the framework of society. And so the perverse effects of reestablishing society are way more consequential than anything to do with the war on drugs. Um, and without establishing a set plan for shared resource allocation, there is a potential for abuses by people in power um, with whatever economic system comes next. 
because there will always be a scarcity of resources of gold of oil granted we'd love to grow hemp and you know solve these problems but you know there's no real simple solution to everything and forgive me for using that as you know some sort of uh, silly silly uh, example but i guess in retrospect the negative effects of ending capitalism would be way worse than anything to do with the war on drugs because we have an invented system that's better yet um and additionally a lot of those things that capitalism uh, causes such as uh, uh, economic problems of, of environmental problems of poverty of inequality um, they're present in almost every system and they have been ever since civilization and it goes back to before you know the growing of crops to the hunters and gatherers some people have more valuable hunting lands and they you know uh, it, it just inequality is, is, is a factor of life however working through the present system and trying to devise ways to uh, solve that inequality is a lot easier than completely redeveloping it. So I think that would be our, our argument. All right. Thank you, Anne. Um, would someone like the negative from the negative team, you, you have three minutes to respond to uh, that statement by Anne Coulter. Um, I, I can do that. Um, uh, so also just kind of like, again, linking this back is that we're not trying to forget about any sort of human element and we're not trying to forget about the fact that, uh, that inequality exists in every system, but what we're trying to link it back to is again, that the war on drugs is not just about one iteration of oppression. It's talking about, um, and not just the people who, but the entire system that kind of links to the way that drugs are produced and the ways that drugs are distributed and the ways that people are incarcerated for that. And then also the conditions in which people consume drugs being, um, being inequitable. And when we talk about there being solutions, like mentioning, you know, other societies like Japan, which is also a capitalistic society, that America exists under a higher level of free market capitalism. There are fewer regulations to that market. We see other societies um, that are, you know, neighbors to us, like, again, Portugal, great example, right? That um, has all of these legal legalizations and regulations of drugs. Um, the more that we regulate that, the more that we step away from a capitalistic society, because free market capitalism, which is closer to what America exists in right, in right now, we add regulations to it and gets closer to socialism, which is a different economic system. So, of course, we should have these regulations and everything along those lines, right? But that would move us away from free market capitalism. So we're what we're trying to argue for is not like an absolute, like it's not going to be some sort of revolt. It's not going to be some sort of violent uprising. What it's going to be is more and more regulations to first legalization and then regulations of, you know, there being an FDA for drugs to making sure that, you know, people don't die from things being laced within it or things along those lines. And that's moving closer and closer to some sort of socialism. Um, even though that is considered a dirty word, it's a different economic system. So these things, it's not like a violent revolt. It's not like going to instantly solve all these problems. But you guys are arguing for policy changes, and that would put us towards a different economic system. So it wouldn't be capitalism anymore. And that's what we're arguing for. All right. Thank you, Sophie. Um... And now the affirmative team, if uh, you have one minute to prepare, if you'd like, and following that, you'll have three minutes to respond to what Sophie said. Hi, I'm ready to respond now, if that's okay. Right on. Sounds good. Great. Um, so one of the uh, examples cited by Sophie was Portugal, you know, and, um, and it's interesting that you bring that up because, you know, Portugal, uh, most people probably are aware that Portugal decriminalized the possession of all, like all drugs, similar to how Oregon recently passed their decriminalization of all drugs. However, decriminalization alone 
it does not is not ending the war on drugs and that's not sufficient to end the war on drugs because um like in it, for example in portugal i believe over 10 percent of the people that are in, incarcerated in portugal are actually in, in are still incarcerated for drugs so it's like you know it doesn't really do anything to uh people can still be convicted of, of drug selling manufacturing um you know so it's like so while it's better for this the the average substance consumer it actually it, it does nothing to cripple the the mechanisms through which the war on drugs are are most commonly uh fought which is through the the uh, trying to get the supply um trying the interdiction of the supply line or whatever um you know what i'm trying to say basically um and also adding more regulations does not actually mean that it's not viable in a capitalist system it's like yeah the most pure form of capitalism is like the oh yes in the in with the invisible hand everything's gonna gonna like everybody will get the best prices and it'll be the best you know what i mean it's like so capitalism ultimately in its purest form calls for a lack of regulations because believing that the market economy is going to balance itself out that doesn't mean that that it's no longer capitalism as soon as you add some regulations. That's actually not what that means, in my opinion. And um, and therefore, I feel like like that argument remains fundamentally flawed. And um, even though it is it is a good argument and you make some some really, really powerful points, Sophie, I, I feel like um, I feel like it is a mistake to cite Portugal as being a. Um, like a model that we want to necessarily strive for. I think something else to really think about is that, um, is, yeah, it is, it's like the United States, we have a lot more problems going on than just, than just, uh, uh, yeah, capitalism. It's like, well, capitalism, you know, it's like we have like, yeah, I don't know. Do you want to go, Jeremy? Oh, I was, I was just going to 20 seconds. Sure. I was just going to finish up with a comment. And, uh, you know, in terms of socialism, two thirds of our federal government's budget goes to social welfare programs like, um, you know, uh, Social Security and Medicaid. And so, you know, um, I don't know. I just don't know if we've developed a better form. Um, I'm up for the revolution to capitalism, but I, I'd like to see a better, a better system proposed. Right on time. All right. So. That concludes our sub point section of the debate. We have one more to go, which is the, uh, the closing statements. So I'm gonna give everyone two minutes to prepare a closing statement and then each team will have four minutes to uh, give their final closing statements. So you guys can prepare for two minutes. Also, while they're prepping, I just wanted to say that I, I forgot to mention earlier that we are going to have a voting at the end, um, and uh, we're going to be doing that through poll. So I made a poll um, with Pollmaker, and um, you know I have the dashboard on the other end. So I'm just going to be putting that into the chat. Um, if that for some reason doesn't work, I can always do it manually, and everybody can just put um, their answer in the chat. <laughs> but again, just remember that when it's concluded, we're voting on who presented the arguments the best, um, not necessarily presentation or speaking, but sort of more whose arguments were very good um, and whose arguments were the best for what they were um, advocating for. Um, so that's the whole purpose of Debate Club. Um, I think just wanted to say before the closing arguments start also, everybody did such an amazing job so far. Um, and this is really what the club is for. It's for everybody to get more familiar with it. Um, the people who are doing it, the people who are watching it. I'm just really, really grateful that we have this today. Uh, and I'm excited to see the closing arguments. So great job, everyone. Oh, are we ready for some closing arguments? The, the affirmative team will be going first, if you guys are ready. So Aaron or Jeremy, whoever would like to take it. All right, so I'm going to try to uh, finish up the best that I can. Um, 
So the closing arguments um, is capitalism, ending capitalism the most important, do we have to end capitalism to end the war on drugs? Um, I think there will always be an incentive for addiction. Uh, there will always be human suffering. There will always be chaotic and problematic drug use. And I think there will always be illegal markets, no matter what it is. People will trade substances, whether it's homemade moonshine or, you know, Molly or something crazy, you know, whatever. It will always be an illegal drug trade, no matter what there is, as long as there's resources. And the only way to completely eliminate that is for some sort of agency, whether government or corporate, to control all those resources. And by controlling those resources, you limit freedom. Um, capitalism, the effects of it are uh, insulatory to human conditions. Um, and again, that might sound cold, but every single system is gonna uh, is gonna have pain, suffering, poverty. However, capitalism offers the best mechanisms to rectify that. Um, granted, there are socialist or you know health-based programs, but the best way to finance those are through capital, through free trade, through open markets, um, and not allowing for one entity to control all the resources for a certain group of people because that's where uh, uh, power corrupts absolutely every time. And so um, capitalism allows for freedom. Um, Aaron, do you have anything you want to say? Capitalism allows freedom, but capitalism also, it just has nothing to do with, it's, it's like, I, I'm sorry, I really just don't see how ending capitalism it's like, yes, we, we do need to end capitalism. That's a great idea and a great thing to, to strive for. It's like, let's do that on this path. And so let's end the war on drugs on this path. And they can run together or they can run parallel to each other, but they don't need to be on the same trail. And so it's like, you know, one of them is, is possibly far easier to accomplish than the other and um, and could feasibly be accomplished within like my lifetime. Whereas I would be very surprised to see the, the capitalist economic system crumble in my lifetime. Honestly, that's just my personal opinion, which um, can be worth nothing. I am 40. So, uh, you know, it's like I'm closer to the end of my lifetime probably than some of the other people here. But um, yeah, I just don't see how um, it, it, I, I, I just firmly believe that that we should not like like get distracted by um, theoretical and like esoteric like conversations about like like what is and is not morally just when it's like this is the solution and it's it's right here it's called legalizing all drug legalization and regulation and however that ends up manifesting would be great and if it comes along with the, the fall of capitalism then so be it that's killer still because i would be happy to see that day regardless but um but yeah i let's not confuse the issue thank you very much Right on. Thank you, Aaron and Anne. Um, we have one more, which is the negative team, and they are their closing statement. So whoever would like, and you have four minutes. It would be, it's difficult to say that, um, that capitalism and the war on drugs are on separate paths because when we look at the history of them, they're so inextricably linked um, through even just the beginning of the system, right? If we say that the war on drugs was beginning because of racism, that was true also with the way that capitalism was built in America because who was America built for? The white slave owning, owning men who created the way that this economic and this governmental system functioned. So there's so many ways in which throughout the entire history of the of the US, of capitalism and of um, the war on drugs, that it has been consistently reinforced the structure to make the rich richer and to um, have this particular group of society continue to be the ones who are in power, continue to be the ones who control the government, continue to be the ones who influence policy. Um, so arguing that these are, are separate things ignores the history of it, ignores the experience of people who um, were, you know, in, were enslaved in the beginning for use on, to be, you know, exploited for labor and then also the people who are again incarcerated 
for the exploitation of, of labor and again for this system to continually oppress a certain group of people for in some ways economic benefit because that's largely how the wealthy and the powerful stay in power is their economic like you know wealth and um just kind of consistently seeing that wealth gap and that gap continue to widen over the years um and when we say that uh capitalism is the best system because it allows for the most freedom that that phrase or the way that we view freedom in America is very limited because we see it as freedom to do anything, freedom to live and die by our own wills, but we don't see it as freedom to an education, freedom to uh, live life free of oppression. We don't see it as freedom to live life in the most um, healthful and like happy way. And if we continue to view freedom as I can do whatever I want, this cap, this market can be completely open and it can function however it wants to function. That's not really freedom for the majority of people. That's freedom for the people who have consistently been wealthy and that if we let the system stand as it is, it will continue to be. When we're talking about this debate, we're not talking about it just in an esoteric term. We're talking about it linking it to the history of what has brought us to the place that we are at now. We're talking about it not in an esoteric term, but that the war on drugs is a war on people and whether or not it's people who are incarcerated in the US or whether or not it's not people who are working in um, fields, who are working under terrible labor conditions, we're trying to argue for freedom from oppression for those people. So while we do agree that there should be legalization for all drugs and freedom from people outside of the system and these are steps that we need to take, we the negation consistently repeats that the war on drugs won't end until pe everyone is free from oppression and that when we're functioning under capitalism, more people are going to be oppressed than um, in, in a different system. And we need to force ourselves to imagine that there is a better system out there because once we imagine it, we consistently move towards action, policy and change and that there are ways to exist within a world that everybody has the means met. All right. Thank you, Sophie, and thank you to everyone who presented. So now we will have some voting. Chad, if you want to help us with that. And Nancy Grace, sorry. Yeah. Just, <laughs> we just dropped it in the chat there. All right. So I just pulled an Ann Coulter move and voted for myself. <laughs> nice. That's fitting. Although, although the other team did very well and was eloquent. While people are voting, I just like to point out that I see like people on both sides had such good points, and um, I think there's strong arguments for both sides. But uh, we're talking about this at like a unique point in history, right? There, we're in a transition. And if we look at whether politically, economically, socially, environmentally, like this system is no longer working. So we're, whether it ends up that the ending the war on drugs works hand in hand with building a new system, or if this one will kind of lumber on for a little while longer, it, it seems like we are, are lucky because we were born in a time where we get to influence the future. And by literally being part of this organization and doing this work, then we are like the people that are going to end the drug war, which is a huge privilege. I'm just grateful to everyone who spoke tonight and everyone who's here. And I look forward to working with you all towards that goal of liberation. Right, oh, see. there! I see in the chat. Will there be an opportunity to ask the debaters questions? Are we going to have Q and A? Yeah, if you guys want Q and A, I'm. That's totally fine. We had um, uh, cat. We had the Kahoot planned. If you still wanted to do that, but and and then deciding on costumes. If if that's. Oh yeah, Sophie. Um, not sure if I'm the only one that can't hear Chad. You got? Can you hear me now? No. I can hear Chad. You can I can hear, hear you. Chad. That's weird. Just you, Kat? Was that just Kat who said that? Yeah, I, I can hear you fine. OK, interesting. She can't hear Chad, but she can hear Nancy. Ah. <laughs>
It's 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 fully taken its course. <laughs> the transformation is complete. Okay, well, I do have the results here. Um, ten about ten people voted, so that's pretty good. Um, I don't know if anybody wanted to do any more voting, but um, I'm I'm going to assume that this is it. Um, yeah, like Evan said, this was just a really great debate. Um, it was really interesting to see just the um, strategy you guys use to come at the points and even people on the same teams didn't necessarily have like even the same definition of capitalism or their or their character didn't have the same definition of capitalism um it was just interesting to see that you guys were still able to bring it full circle each as a team um so that with that being said um 